Hi everybody, Josh, KI6NAZ. Welcome back to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Today we're gonna to talk about the LC192, the backpack that is kind of a system that goes along with the IC705 and specifically what I'm packing in it and what antennas I'll be taking out of the field. Let's check it out. And thanks again for clicking on the Ham Radio Crash Course. If you could, please click subscribe if you haven't already. Give me a thumbs up, it helps out the YouTube algorithm. I live stream every Saturday at 5 p.m. talking about all kinds of cool things in amateur radio, so appreciate your support. So the LC192 is a roughly 11 liter backpack. It has two main compartments with dividers in it. And the best way I can think about how to uh, put this into your mind is it's kind of like a camera bag backpack. All the edges are reinforced and all the exterior panels and front panels have padding. So you get a really safe kind of container to put your radio in. Obviously, everyone's kind of familiar about this top compartment where the IC705 goes and it's retained in here with a little piece of like leather strapping and it screws into the bottom of the radio, which gives you a um, safe way of uh, keeping it around and actually operating it directly in the bag. You just kind of tilt it up and, and bring it out a little bit and that's all you have to do uh, to get access to the radio. So very straightforward in, in being able to operate in the field. Going around the outside of the bag really quick, there is an antenna flap on the side which uh, can go to the side of the 705. I have a signal stuff signal stick attached with a 90 degree BNC elbow and that works just fine. Now, the speaker and microphone connection are on this left side of the 705 and there are Velcro openings on each side of the bag that will allow you to route cabling through. I have chosen to bring the microphone on the right hand side of the bag here and connect it to the strap here. When you're in the field walking around, let's say you want to operate VHF, UHF, you just connect the speaker mic port on and you'll hear the audio out of the speaker mic and you still have microphone capability as well. Same side of the bag there is a mesh pouch for like a water bottle. In this case, I have an antenna mask. You could probably put a water bottle next to it and there is a retention strap right next to it. In the front, you obviously have the top flap for the 705 and then there is the main body flap. Now, this is pretty fully stuffed with stuff I'm gonna bring. We'll go through it in a second, but um, there's all kinds of little pockets in the front here. There are three mesh divider pouches for more batteries for the 705. And like I said, we'll, we'll tap into that in a second once we get through the exterior. On the right-hand side though, or your left-hand side as you're looking at this, probably one of the more interesting aspects of it, I've got a lot of comments on Instagram, what's going on with this whole thing. There's a plastic kind of board, a plastic sheet that, is, uh, that goes kind of along the body of the backpack. And the thickness of it is basically the same thickness as what you would use for an antenna uh, lip mount, for like a trunk lid or a hatchback lid. And that's exactly what I did. I've attached a diamond antenna mount for SO239 on top, and I've routed the coax down to the bottom route. There's another route, route point in the bottom here, and then inside the backpack and then up into the top. So that's the first thing. You've got a mobile antenna mount if you wanna just use some kind of mobile antenna. You could actually use a 70 centimeter, two meter mobile antenna with this and then swap it out for an HF antenna like a vertical or something. What's inside the bag, I'll show you in a little bit. And then you can throw that weatherproof uh, cap on there uh, when you're walking around. Your choice, you, you have all kinds of options with this. Now the pouch is another interesting aspect of it. There are little loops, uh, horizontal loops that go, looks like there's four or five of them that run along the sides of this plastic board for the antenna mount. And the spacing is perfect for Molly bag attachments, M-O-L-L-E, which is uh, military bag, accessory bags that you can attach onto backpacks. On the side, I've attached a admin pouch or a first aid pouch. 
a lot of my antenna parts or things that I would carry in the field for antennas are gonna be right by that where the antenna mount is. I'll open that up and we'll go through that first. On top, I have a small nylon bag with BNC adapters. This goes in. Now this is a fairly bulky, I could size this down. This is a reel of radial wire with a mini um, banana plug. And the antenna I'll show you later uh, interfaces with this directly, so that's why I put that in there. And you're gonna change that up depending on what antennas you decide to bring. Uh, this is a bit of personal security, personal safety going in the field. I used to be a Boy Scout, so I always carry the 10 essentials with me and a part of that is gonna be a security blanket or an emergency blanket, a lighter, a whistle, a small tiny signal mirror, small tiny plier, multi-tool, tweezers. I swear I get splinters in the field all the time. Uh, not necessarily for ticks or anything like that, but for splinters, it happens all the time a ferro rod, and a Fresnel lens. This is, uh, these are pretty cool actually. I'll try and post links in the description for all these so you can check it out. This is my own little safety thing I bring with me. And then at the bottom, a bunch of MSR aqua tabs if you needed to sterilize water. Again, this is like me, you know, being prepared for situations when I go in the field. I try to always have the 10 essentials on me. And again, if you don't know what that is, I'll post the link in the description for what the 10 essentials are. So security blanket goes on top. All this other stuff just kind of flops in pretty easily. And then below that, I have a battery. This is a BioNO 6 amp hour 12 volt battery with the Andersons already attached. So that's my admin pouch right there on the side. Sliding over to the front of, or the back, I guess, depending on how you look at backpacks, your straps are nylon mesh and they're, they're relatively decently padded. There is no uh, waist belt. This backpack isn't that big, so you don't really need to worry that much about having a waist belt. There are multiple horizontal straps that you can attach a microphone or the speaker mic for the 705 and they're sized directly, you know, perfectly for it. It has a chest clip for horizontal across your chest to tighten that up a little bit so you're not flopping around. And on the other side, you could put an HT or something like that. All right, so main pouch time. On the top or flopping on the outside here, that's why I don't really wanna go into this that much because this will just fall out. My Pelican tiny tablet laptop case, you probably can guess what's in here, but it is my, in fact, I'll just lay this down for now because we're gonna go directly into it. It is my GPD Pocket 2 mini laptop for the field, which also I have a USB uh, B or USB A to USB C cable for charging and a lightning cable for my phone. You can swap that out for whatever you want. And that all fits in this, snaps closed, and that gives you a waterproof uh, connection. So I like that case. A little bulky though. So your choice, you don't have to take it. In fact, the GPD Pocket and most tablets will fit in the vertical space here. And this can be removed. It's just a Velcro like camera pad divider that goes right over the top. This is kind of just in the default configuration that came from ICOM. There's also a, let me pull this out of the way so you can see it better. There's also a center divider here. And again, you don't need to use this, so you can throw this on the side. Now I have, uh, I call this a ditty bag. We'll walk through that in a second. The antenna, so this is kind of an important part of this whole thing. The antenna that I have here is the Diamond HFJ350M. This came out, six months ago or so, and it is an 80 through 10 meter whip antenna. And it has tap points that you uh, tap out to pick and select the different bands. You can go straight to the tap point right here, this tap uh, section, put the whip on that, and that gets you 40 through 10. If you add this larger just coil block, that'll get you 80 meters. Now, a word of warning on this antenna, this is a very comp compromised antenna because your actual element, your radiating elements are coils of wire that are coiled around, you know, lots and lots of loops. But it attaches pretty easily. You just throw this on the top here, extend the whip, and you're off to the races. The bottom here is a plug for the mini banana connector that I have, and that just plugs into the side. It's a pretty tight fit, but it goes in there. This antenna 
there will be a review coming out on this antenna. There's another antenna on the market that's just like it. It's the MFJ model. That uh, antenna, I believe, also has the uh, PL259 connector. Or no, is that BNC? I think it's BNC. Anyway, th these antennas are fiddly. You have to mess around with them a lot to get them in a space where they're, they're happy and will work effectively. Throwing more radials on this is always a very good idea. One radial wire is not really an appreciable way to use this antenna, but it's an option. And that mount is already there, so it's kind of like, why not bring it with you? You know, it's, it's not that big a deal to just, you know, put it in your pack and take it out into the field. And it's okay. All right, plenty of options uh, for different stuff you want to do. I am obviously making videos when I'm out in the field, and so in this blue pouch here, I have more cabling, so more uh, wires. This is a phone tripod. This is a Joby. This flips out, mounts on a tripod, and is stretchy, so you can go into like for an iPhone or an Android phone if that's how you shoot video. There is a UltraPod tripod. This has an extra long Velcro strap that you can actually just Velcro it to things and use it as a uh, tripod mount for like a trekking pole or something like that. Every time I do a soda activation, all the videos, whenever I'm portable, I'm using this tripod. It's really, really nice. Again, I'll post links in all this stuff in the uh, description. There is a tripod mount for my DJI Osmo Pocket. This allows you to do Wi-Fi so you can control the Osmo Pocket with your phone. And the Osmo Pocket is the camera that I use in the field. It shoots 4K video, and it does really, really nice time lapses, moving time lapses. So you can set points to go up and down all over the place and do these really cool time lapses, which is always really, really nice if you're in a scenic spot. Why not have that uh, capability? So I incorporate that. I use a Rode, uh, what is this, Video Micro. This is a non-powered or non-internally powered antenna. <laughs> antenna. This is a non-internally powered microphone, and I have it connect to uh, a tripod mount, which attaches to the, um, the DJI pocket, and then the wiring to connect to it and all that stuff. So typical video stuff for you that uh, like to take pictures and stuff like that. The tripod is a is the ultra pod's a definite definite awesome piece of kit. So I, I recommend that highly for, for you that go in the field. Alright, ditty bag. This is more just preparedness stuff. Uh, when you go in the field, you should be uh, bringing stuff along to take care of your situation and dealing with whatever you've got going on. This should technically be on the outside pocket. It's a first aid item. Uh, I have an Israeli bandage and a tourniquet. This is a SWAT tourniquet. It's not the best tourniquet that you could have. The rat's tourniquet is a lot better. Blood stoppers and things that you can like apply pressure with is going to be very important if you get hurt in the field. So, you know, it really should be probably in this pocket. I'll consider changing that up. A extra water vessel folded down. You can fill this up before you go. This is a platypus one liter vessel and I use hair ties to keep it cinched closed. Hair ties are really, really valuable, um, not just because your wife comes and takes them, but uh, I've used them in lots of situations, so why not have a couple of them on hand? Ah, <laughs> sunscreen. You gotta have sunscreen. That's a sunscreen stick. I got it from Trader Joe's. Flashlight, backup flashlight from what I normally have in my pocket. This is a Nightcore Tup. This will do 1,000 lumen output um, under kind of a temporary run, but it will go all the way up to 200 lumens and has a one lumen output, which is really nice. You can clip this to a hat bill and it works as a nice backup if you want to have, you know, a smaller type of uh, light. All this stuff is relatively not lightweight. This is just kind of base, having a good supply, a kit on you for things that you just may deal with in the field. Now, some of you may feel differently about this, but I always pack, it's called the Deuce of Spades. It is a packable trowel and a little bit of toilet paper. I assume I don't have to explain why you may need that. Maybe you won't, I don't know. I guess it depends on how long you're out there. 
You know, you never plan, you never plan for a three hour tour. You plan for things that could happen. Next to that, a battery backup. This is an Anker 1000 or 10,000 milliamp hour. I think it's 10,000 milliamp hour. I don't remember. Yeah, 10,000. It's a power core light. This is probably one of the smaller backpackable power banks that you can, you can have on you. And they do okay. They're now at this point, you can start changing things up as you see fit based off of what your needs are. This is actually taking up a good amount of space, but I'll tell you what, there's a, um, there's a thing I do when I go in the field and it's make usually a cup of coffee. When I get onto a summit, I'm almost always going to make a cup of coffee. I also have a couple of bars. These are RX bars, peanut butter, chocolate, coconut chocolate. These are um, good, they're like 200 calories. So good to have some food on hand. And then a whole host of these Alpine Start instant coffees. This is in no way good coffee, but when you're on a summit after hiking for a while, it tastes fine. <laughs> Now the, the cook kit, this is the whole cook kit. This is a, Hal, a GSI Outdoors Halulite Mini. It comes with its own cozy for when you wanna drink coffee out of it and the lid is also a sippy lid. The lid flips over when you're boiling water. So what I generally will do if I'm like bringing a, a, like an actual meal and yes, I've definitely brought meals before just in case. Like if you've got a side, this is a hearty chili with beans. It's a Thrive Express dehydrated meal. Use your, boil up your first batch of water, goes into this guy, this gets set aside to reconstitute. And then you make yourself some coffee uh, on your second go. I throw in a uh, MRE toilet paper thing. You know, these are always valuable. I throw them in with the cook kit. I always have a mini Bic lighter in addition to the mini Bic lighter that's in the Pelican 1010 case. And a GigaPower uh, tri-fuel canister. And this is the pot holder for the Halulite Mini. It's magnetized, so it snaps under the side of this guy and drops in the bottom. For a stove, I use, I don't even know if these are available anymore, but this stove is super cool, super cheap and available on Amazon. I'm sure this is a clone of something. I'll find out whatever the current iteration of this is and I'll, I'll link it in the description so you can check it out. But this is the stove. It's a titanium stove and it weighs nothing. It works really well. I use this on just about all the soda activations I go on because I almost always make a cup of coffee when I get to the summit. I guess I'm not a, a mid-summer summit guy. Um, I'm more of a fall type of summer guy and spring uh, type of soda guy. So I, I am always like, let me get some coffee in me, generally because I'm, I like coffee a lot. So I always pack a stove and a way to warm up water. Okay, I don't wanna lose anything. So I gotta throw it all back in here. That's one thing I don't mess with too, is I, I do, <laughs> I try to uh, keep a, like a sheet, an inventory sheet, and it's going to go, once I type this all up, it's gonna go in this Velcro pouch that's right here, this little uh, pocket um, in front of the, the backpack so that I know exactly what I have on hand. So let's take a moment, I'm gonna clean up, and then let's take a moment to talk about some antennas, alternative options, if you didn't wanna go with the uh, mount on the side and the HFJ350M. What else could you take with you in a field? So let me clean this up and I'll be right back with you. I should mention before we, we tap back into talking about antennas, there also is a, a little slide out uh, pocket in the back that you can put like some kind of documents or maybe you have some laminated cards. Maybe you have your license laminated, something like that. That's just some extra storage. I didn't want to forget about mentioning it to you. Also, I would be totally remiss if I didn't remind people about Luco tape. If you go hiking, uh, get some Luco tape and add it to your kit. They make smaller rolls than this, but uh, this stuff is fantastic. It like bonds really well to your skin and it will stay adhered for days uh, basically. So if you get blisters or you get a wound, you can likely close it up with this and then just leave it. Don't do anything to it, just leave it. Just assuming it's clean and all that good stuff. So Luco tape. Okay, so obviously we've got the antenna mount here. 
you can put whatever you want if it's a SO239 you got to pack your own radials all that fun stuff but let's say you didn't want to go that route you want to use something a little bit more robust well you know you got the side of the backpack that you can throw a mast on if you throw a mast on well what would be a good option for an antenna a soda beams tri-band dipole this is the one that I take into the field most often uh, nowadays it is I already did a review on it I'll put that in the card so you can check it out it's super simple. You just connect the two alligator clips on the legs for whichever elements you want on the air. So if you're doing uh, 20 or 30 or 40, that's what this one's cut for. That's what you use. It's a three-legged dipole. Two elements are the radiating elements, and then there's another third one. That third one is kind of like the support. So you don't need guying of any kind. It's all done with the radiating elements and the third leg. This thing is really, really nice. And if you're doing soda, it's great when you get up high like that. And I've used that to set up in the past when I don't have the full space to lay out that 40 meter dipole, because that could be a problem. So in that instance where I know I'm going to a summit where you're not gonna have a lot of uh, horizontal space to put up a dipole, take along your Take It Along. The Take It Along 1000 by Wolf River Coils. This is obviously the coil. The bottom part here is where the uh, SO239 is, and there is tripod legs. They stick on the side, so you'd have to get this all uh, into the kit. You could likely put them on the side here, or maybe put them in the back where the, the padding is, that little map pocket in the back, and then bring your extendable whip. This is the stock extendable whip, the MFJ uh, whip that you can buy. And I believe Wolf River now also sells a longer whip is a really good option. This will get you straight up 20 meters, not this one, the, the longer one, the MFJ or the, the one that Wolf River is doing. It'll just get you 20 meters. You just throw this up there and then you adjust it up or down uh, depending on your SWR. And that's all you need to do. And of course, you're going to need radials. This one comes with three radials. I 3D printed some wire winders and did a little figure eight overhand on them and these seem to do fine in the field. Again, hair ties, that's what I'm using to, to hold them in. Hair ties are great for that. So those are three antenna systems that you can deploy. That, you know, the, the diamond is, is finicky. Like I said, I'll be doing a video on that in the future um, that will mount here. But that is an all-in-one thing that's pretty simple to get up in the air and running really, really quickly. You just tap it out for whatever band you're gonna be operating on. The Wolf River is probably the most robust. It's also like the heaviest. It also deploys a coil, so there is a compromise there. And I think the Soda Beams is a slam dunk. You kind of have to move around some of the dividers to make that fit, but it will fit. So those are some of just simple antennas that you can bring along. This is my kit for going out in the field. I will be doing a soda activation here in not too long with the uh, IC705 and the LC192 backpack. I, I know I mentioned that I'll have the bladder of, of for water, but I'll definitely have a water bottle on the side. That is one downside is that really um, you're not going to put water in the main compartment and you have this, uh, this pouch on the side. You could use your Molly bag on the side to attach a, a, a you know, some kind of water carrier or bottle carrier. If you didn't want to go with this antenna mount, you just change your Molly up a little bit for attachments and, and that's all there is to it pretty straightforward from my point of view. Anyway, tell me your thoughts. So I'd like to hear what you think about the LC192 and uh, the 705, How what antennas you might take into the field. Obviously, we know that the 705 does not have a tuner. That's not that big a deal though, guys. You just have to plan your antennas that you're bringing with you appropriately to be resonant. That's it, that's all you gotta do. Anyway, again, I'd love it if you subscribed. If you haven't already, give me a thumbs up. I do live stream every Saturday at 5 p.m. And I'd love it if you checked it out. I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. You've been watching the Hammer New Crash Course. Thanks, and I'll talk to you later. See ya.